السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome brothers and sisters to another session Today we are going to speak about ways to protect ourselves from shaitan in the last two reminders, we spoke about Satan's guide on how to misguide. We spoke about the footsteps of shaitan and how the shaitan takes the human being one step at a time toward the sin. We also spoke about the many traps of shaitan and how the shaitan misguides the human being. Today, we are going to speak about ways that we can employ to protect ourselves from a shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allahumma ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He said, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My slaves, those who obey me, you will not have any authority over them. Allah didn't end there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <clears throat> Illa man min al Except those who obey you, those who follow you, O shaitan, those who will follow you from those who are following their desires, their temptations, those who submit to their temptations, Yes, those people you will have authority over them. In other place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانٌ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ That shaitan does not have any authority over those who have iman, <laughs> iman and they have their trust and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even on the Day of Judgment, Shaitan, he will see all those who followed him and he will announce, he will say, he will say, وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعُوتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي He said, he will say that I didn't have any authority over you except that I invited you and you answered my call. So, when we follow our temptations, follow our evil desires, then we have uh, subjected uh, ourselves to the shaitan. When we obey the shaitan, then we have subjected ourselves to the shaitan. So one way to, and the greatest way to protect ourselves from a shaitan is al-ikhlas. Al-ikhlas means sincerity and of course when we say sincerity it is truthfulness right it is the absolute truthfulness in what in two things number one sincerity sincerity in our iman in our belief and number two sincerity in our worship in our actions so there is the the inward and there is the outward there is the internal and there is the external there is the Iman, there is the actions. So we have to be sincere in our Iman, which means that I genuinely love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love his deen. I love his book. I love his messenger at heart, meaning I am sincere in my Iman, in my Islam. I have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have accepted Allah as my Lord. I have accepted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as my prophet and messenger. I have accepted the Qur'an as my book, as my guidance, as my constitution, as a Muslim. So yeah, we have to be sincere, number one, in that. When we are sincere, we have that protection from shaitan. Number one, number two, is the sincerity in worship, meaning in action, in practical, right? So sincerity in worship means that Whatever I do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the acts of worship, I must do them only for Him sincerely without corrupting it with riya, without corrupting it uh, uh, with, uh, with seeking uh, the attention and the recognition and the, you know, uh, uh, credit from the people. 
right? I don't want, I, when I worship Allah Azza wa Jal, I worship Allah. I, I want it to have nothing to do with the people. So when you worship Allah Azza wa Jal, remove the people from in between, right? And then, um, it is easy to know. It is easy to know if you are sincere in your iman. I mean, this is pretty simple, right? Because that is something you cannot doubt. You're like, am I sincere in my Islam or not? Am I sincere in my faith or no? Nobody can doubt that, right? So it is easy for you to be sincere in your iman. Like, okay, I'm a believer. I I love Allah. I love Rasulullah. I love Quran. I love Islam. This is not a joke. This is not something that you know i even have to give a second thought to no i love my deen i love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is easy but uh you know when it comes to actions when it comes to actions then that is that can get a bit tricky so there we must work we must you know work hard to make sure we are sincere now how can we attain that sincerity, that second sincerity in our actions? Well, number one, make a lot of dua for ikhlas, right? We, in, in the dua series, uh, the, we have the dua series uh, on YouTube. Uh, in, that, in that series, you will see uh, one of the duas, uh, perhaps the second or the third dua, is about ikhlas. Right to we 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 suppose we should memorize that du'a and we should, you know, every day we should ask Allah to give us ikhlas to give us sincerity. Allahumma marzuqni al-ikhlasa wa sidqa fil aqwali wal a'mali wal ahwal. Allah give me sincerity in my speech, in my actions, and in my intentions. Right, so intentions, speech, and actions. And then there's another du'a. Uh, which is also part of that series where we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from, you know, any type of shirk, which is minor shirk, which is considered showing off. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lam wa astaghfiruka lima la a'lam. Oh Allah, I ask you to protect, protect me from committing shirk with you or associating partners with you in the major way, right? which is to completely disbelieve in Allah and to worship another God, others besides Allah, and in the minor way, which is to show off, to seek, to worship Him, but seek the pleasure of the people. So, you know, these du'as are, these du'as are very, very important and we should ask Allah Azza wa Jal because only He can purify us. Number two, increase in your secret worships. And this is, this is amazing. I mean, there are some worships you cannot do secretly. For example, when men, they go and pray in the masjid, you pray in jama'ah, you're praying with others, right? So there are some acts of worship. We, you make a lot of dua in them for Allah to give us sincerity. But when it comes to secret worships, what does that mean? That means if you want to know whether your public worship or your open worship is, is sincere or not, well, number one, compare your private life with your public life. If there is some contradiction and there is uh, this, uh, um, um, you know, disconnect from these two, then, you know, the, it, one must question the sincerity, right? No, a believer, a believer is not two-faced. A believer is same person publicly and privately in front of my wife, in front of my spouse generally, and my family, uh, and then in front of my relatives, in front of my colleagues, in front of you know the public, in 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 the masjid, in front of you know people. The believer is one. The believer is one. If you are one, right, then alhamdulillah, that's a sign of sincerity. If you're not right like privately you are one type of person and publicly you are another type of person it's like you have a mask publicly you have another mask privately then th that should cause us to question our sincerity number two reputation with people versus reputation with allah subhanallah again comes back to private versus public life now how i behave in front of the people and how i behave when i'm alone with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so if we are sinning 
privately, alhamdulillah, it's better than sinning publicly. But when a person is sinning, then that is a proof that you lack sincerity. Okay? Every sin is a proof of lack of sincerity because uh, think about it, Allah is watching me. Allah is watching me. Nobody else is watching me. And I have no problem sinning. But if somebody was watching me, I wouldn't be watching that video. I wouldn't be watching that. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now if my mother or my father or my friends or someone that I respect was watching me. But Allah is watching us at all times. So every sin is a proof of lack of sincerity. We're not saying you don't have sincerity. Right? We're saying there's a lack of sincerity. So, you know, we must improve ourselves, inshallah ta'ala, by repenting to Allah and turning to Allah all the times. Number three. Your salah individually versus in the masjid. Subhanallah, this is this is one of the best proofs, right? If you lack sincerity or not. How is your prayer when you're by yourself at home as compared to your prayer in the masjid? How is your khushur, your concentration, your humility? in your prayer when you by yourself versus that which is in the masjid in front of the people. Number four, your manners with your family versus your manners with your friends. Are they same or are they different? Well, some people they have uh, manners they're called akhlaq tijariya. You know, <laughs> these are called uh, akhlaq tijariya are um, manners you know business manners like manners based on business like you be nice to me and then i'll be nice to you if you're not gonna be nice to me i'm not gonna be nice to you so it's based upon reciprocity right if if i get a benefit from you then i'll show you good manners but if i don't i don't get any benefit from you i'm not going to show you good manners unfortunately some people are like that they're good with their colleagues they're good with their employees they're good with their customers but when they come home they're nasty with their family members so we talked about number one sincerity sincerity in iman sincerity in actions and we spoke about how to attain sincerity in actions number two second way to protect ourselves from shaitan quality worship quality worship not worship quality worship yes what does that mean when you put quality in your worship, it means that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you love to worship Allah azza wa jal. Right? Some people, they just pray for the hack of praying. They just pray. They don't know what they're saying in there. So that means their heart is not there. They, are not, they don't love to pray. Because had they loved to pray, they would put their mind and their heart and quality and meaning and purpose and make their salah fruitful right many people say allahu akbar right and they are zoned out completely and it's like they're on autopilot or they're on cruise control and they just let the salah go until assalamu alaikum warahmatullah assalamu alaikum warahmatullah and now they're back that is not that's not you see when you don't have quality worship, shaitan will have influence over you. Quality worship, you have to add meaning to your worship, add meaning to your salah, learn the meanings. I mean, what excuse, wallahi what excuse do you and I have not to know the meanings of the wordings in our salah? Arabic? You don't need to. You can just, uh, you, you, all these translations everywhere, go and learn. Memorize. What does subhanak Allahumma mean? You have to learn this. We have to learn this. So adding quality to our salah, adding quality to our Quran. Right? Many of us, we have spent all our life just reading Quran without understanding a bit of it. Why not? These translations available, these tafsirs available, Ibn Kathir, for example. Read it. Learn the meanings of, uh, of the Quran. You don't have to memorize the meanings, but at least know when you read, learn, so you know what the message of Allah is. Dua. 
How many of us, we, we memorize the Arabic du'as and we say those du'as and we have no idea what we say. رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْأَخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا زَعَلَبْنَا عَنْ فُسَنًا إِنَّ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ دُعَاءً مِنْ قَلْبٍ غَافِلٍ لَاهٍ As Rasulullah s.a.w. said, Allah does not accept du'a from a heart that is negligent, that is neglectful, that is distracted, subhanallah. Allah doesn't. So why, why just make du'a? No, make du'a with heart. Make du'a and you understand what you're saying to Allah. Your siyam, your hajj, add quality in our worships. That will be a proof that we love to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and that worship will be so strong and it will be a shield against the shaitan for us. Third way to protect ourselves from shaitan, jama'ah. Allah Akbar. We spoke, we had a separate, you know, reminder on jama'ah, which is being with the community of believers. Accompanying other believers and worshippers is one of the best ways to protect ourselves from shaitan. Remember the hadith, the Prophet said that shaitan, right, he is min al ithnaini, min al ithnaini abad, right? Um, Shaitan is farther from two. Shaitan is with one, but he's farther from two. That means he's farther even more from three, and even more from four, even more from ten, even more from hundred. The more we stick together, the farther the shaitan, shaitan will be from us. And finally, I'm only going to share with you four, and these I'm sharing with you because they're easy. The fourth way to protect ourselves from shaitan is Bismillah, subhanallah. Everything we do, bismillah. When we get up, bismillah. When we sit down, bismillah. Before eating, bismillah. Before drinking, bismillah. Before picking up something, bismillah. Before putting it down, bismillah. Before removing our clothes, bismillah. Before, you know, dressing ourselves, bismillah. Before entering bathroom, bismillah. Before taking shower, bismillah. And we need to teach this to our children. So they say bismillah for everything. Before you get to bed, bismillah. Everything. Everything, Bismillah. Before leaving house, Bismillah. Getting into the house, Bismillah. Getting into the car, Bismillah. Before driving, Bismillah. Everything, Bismillah. I begin with the name of Allah. Right? Protection against Shaitan. It is so easy, but it is so hard for the ghafil heart, for the negligent, neglectful, distracted heart, the one who doesn't want to remember Allah. It will be hard for that person even to say Bismillah. SubhanAllah. May Allah Azza wa protect us from shaitan. May Allah allow us to follow this reminder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to fix ourselves so we can protect ourselves from shaitan. May Allah Azza wa Jalla bless every single one of us in our health and wealth and spouse and families and right? children. May Allah Azza wa grant us all the khair in this world and the next. Allahumma ameen. Wassalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته